Hey guys, welcome to another edition of How to Yard. Today we're getting ready to set up for our next uh, pool today, and uh, this is one I haven't been able to capture, and which is why we're making a video of it. But before we get started, there's something I wanted to point out. Depending on the yard that you go to, they could have apparatuses such as this. It makes it super conducive to be able to pull our parts. As you can see, I can get all my tools up on top of this, including whatever engine or transmission that I want to take. All right, so I do bring a lot of tools and I've been criticized for that, but there have been many situations where I've been very thankful to have as many tools as I do. That means I go home with what I came for. You know, I drive thousands and thousands of miles and spend hundreds of hours on the road being able to acquire my stuff. You know, when we get out there, we still don't know if what I'm going to get is going to even be there or if it's any good. So the next problem would be if I didn't have the right tools. And that would be a total fail on my part, which is why I bring what I do. This cart that you see here, we were talking about making one of our, one of our own. Not every yard has something like this. To mimic something like this, you could see how big and bulky it would be and so how would I even transport it so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to build mine obviously it has to be heavy enough to hold uh, the engine and transmission and all the tools but it also has to be compact you know I don't see this fitting in a car and well it's still too big for my truck I mean imagine taking that down by yourself because of right now that's how I'm doing I'm doing everything on my own today we're working on a 2002 Civic Si from what I can tell, we were the first ones to arrive on the scene. I think this person pretty much knew what they had. All right, so we have Steely's on here. I believe the factory wheels were gonna be a 15 and, and they're gonna be aluminum. Tow hook is usually a good indication that they knew what they had. And then there's Steely's all the way around. We have two spares up front. And check this out. We got a boost gauge, uh-oh. Got a boost gauge, and then we got a wideband sensor there. It's an AM. Uh, chances are the auction sensor's cut. They cut the cats off of this. They don't really care about O2 sensors, so that might not be any good. But I might take the gauge, right? It's an older version, but it'll, it could still work for something. The shifter, look at that, right? I remember test driving these brand new just because I wanted to know what it felt like shifting up there, and it's actually comfortable if you haven't driven one of these before. The elements are like that also. The seats are this suede leathery material, much like the Type R's, right? They're black and red stitching, uh, but that's what would be on the front seats, and you know, people like those, so these are gone, or maybe they were taken by the owner, right? So the next thing we would want off of this is the ECU, and being turboed, I knew right away something was gonna be a mess, and look at that, right? So this could be a wiring harness I would take, I'm nervous to see what it looks like under the hood. Yep, these guys knew what they had. Look at that. Aftermarket intake, it was turboed, but uh, the turbo's not here, right? Because there's an intake here and there's a header back there also. I was kind of suspect that it would look like this, right? Uh, let's look at the wiring harness. They had injectors here and they looks like they plugged back in the factory ones. I don't know what kind of job they did in there. It's scary. I don't know if I want to spend money on this. I could feel butt connectors right in there. So what will we take off an SI? SIs come factory with a K20A3. That's not a very valuable motor. As of right now, I don't know that there's any aftermarket companies making aftermarket rods for these, which then makes building them not preferable. I couldn't tell you how much horsepower these hold. I've never built one before. All I do know is it's not valuable and I won't be taking it because it won't sell. But these are things I will. They do come with a five-speed transmission, much like the RSX's. So we're going to take uh, the transmissions. We probably won't take the cables because it's the style that bolts onto the dashboard and uh, that no one really wants that. But the intake manifold. Now this is essentially the same thing as an RSX K8, K20A2 intake manifold. The throttle body is also desirable. And this too. Right, so when you're doing one of these swaps and you're using AC, uh, the idler pulley is something that people want, so I'll make sure to grab that, but I couldn't see the engine code down in there to see maybe if they swapped a K24 or a K20 A2 in there. Motors and transmissions that look like they've been messed with, we take extreme caution with. I think this is going to come apart very much like an RSX. I do have a video removing an engine from the RSX. 
But uh, we could say that it was crashed here. Was that why it was here? I don't think so. Look, look at all this rust that's developed in the areas that were crashed here. So that means that this thing could have been just like this uh, already. And uh, there's another reason why I came in here. And my suspect is that it was turboed before that maybe the motor's blown. But if the motor's blown, then why did they put it all back to stock? My suspicions are there, it was turboed. They blew that motor. They put this one in here, put it back to stock to try to sell it, and then maybe that person sold it to the yard. Look, so the radiator is new. Maybe uh, this accident here pushed into the original radiator, and that's why they. And it looks like it could have been bent back out, and that's why they replaced it. But uh, we'll take this bumper off here, the headlights and the front end, and uh, let's look at what's going on in there. The headlights and radiator out wasn't too bad. This right here, this hood latch, is just like the RSX. There's a bolt, it's gonna be 10 millimeters, it's just on the back side of this, so you're gonna use the, I'm gonna use a quarter inch ratchet and uh, a 10 millimeter to get to it. Like I was explaining, you know, like I get criticized about how many tools I bring, but man, I, I always go home with something. I take a close look at my uh, socket here. So I have a quarter inch ratchet on there with a short socket and if I were to loosen this I'm gonna bang up right up against uh, this piece here. Okay. The the lower subframe. Now I could wait to take this off till I get the lower subframe off but that doesn't help you. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you another tool that I carry with me so I can get something like that off. Alright so as far as wrenches go this is the style I bring with me. All right, so I rarely use wrenches, but when I do, this is the type that I do use, right? It's a flex head, it's very versatile, and it's gonna get me in here. Now, you may have seen these before. This is a set from, from Blue Point, which is, uh, I guess, a sister company of Snap-on. At least that's where we buy them. But see how we're able to get in there, and it doesn't matter the angle of the wrench. There are times that you need to be able to turn the socket or ratchet the wrench just like this to be able to get into something so it's a nice tool we can inspect the engine code it is an a3 so it is it is the original type of engine that's in here don't know that it's numbers matching uh taking a closer look at the harness it's been messed with also you can see that it's been well you know like wire tied up out of the way i just really nervous taking this it's also been played with over here you know this would be really hard to resell Oh, because it's been messed with so much, people want stuff that's stock. So I uh, don't know that I'm going to take this. That's just something to consider. Moving forward, um, since we're going to take the transmission next, then we're going to get the wheels off, and then the lower subframe is going to come off very much like an RSX. We've discovered that with using Hotsport motor mounts, we can get these axles to work well. Now, talking to Brian Gillespie directly, you know, they make swap mounts specifically because it's, they're perfectly sized. According to him, they just might happen to work. It's not that they do work, it, they just happen to work. They could be, you know, a, a millimeter or two off from the, being the perfect length. So far, so well for us. I'm not saying that is something that you should do, but I have done it in the past and are in current vehicles now. All right, taking another look at this, I think I'm actually gonna take start with the intake manifold first. Uh, seeing that the engine's in place and it's hung pretty well, this would probably be a good time to take off the accessory pulley here and the intake manifold and, of course, throttle body. This throttle cable can work too, the EP3. I have this in a few EF swaps, so I think I'll grab this also. Looks like it's been zip-tied out of the way quite a few times here. Hopefully, it's in good working order. I'm most likely going to leave this intake behind.
All right, with it off, you can see how pretty e you can see how easy it was. Uh, just two 12 millimeters hold it on, and I'm looking at this. This looks really new. I don't know that it is, but it looks like too clean to be to be this used. But uh, which is good, right? You know, so you can see the color the color differences between that washer and the pulley itself. It feels really good. It sounds good. It's a good find. I've shown off my uh, Milwaukee battery ratchet before, and in the previous video I was talking about these larger 12 volt uh, lithium batteries that I got off of eBay. They're a non Milwaukee brand, and they were really cheap and they charge and power very well, except I've discovered this. The battery uh, pulls out without any issues. The clips here, you can see they're, the tabs are broken off on both sides. I bought two of these and that happened to both of them. And so that means I have to hold the back of this door to, to keep the battery in place. So that's something to consider. That's something that hasn't happened to any of my Milwaukee batteries. So is it worth paying the extra for the Milwaukee version? or getting the cheaper ones and dealing with that having to break. It's hitting on the water pump housing. The water pump housing isn't too difficult to get off. We're gonna have to take the alternator off and the air conditioning compressor uh, to access it. And uh, I was also thinking about, well, if this was turboed, I wonder if it has aftermarket fuel pump in there, like a larger 255, 340, maybe even a Walboro 450, who knows? But a lot of times guys uh, use RDX injectors in place of factory because they're an OEM injector, they're larger injector than the factory K series. Could that be what these are? I have to take a closer look once we get the intake manifold off, but what exactly is an RDX? Well, RDX is a 2.3 K-series engine that comes in the Acura RDX and it's turbocharged. I've never seen one in the car until today. I'm sitting right here working on this car and what do you know? There's an RDX right there. For me, this is a first and it was crashed up front. But what's cool about the RDX is the intercooler sits on top of the K23 and it looks like it's all there. Right, so this would be a good indication that the car was running and driving in the accident, which probably means that the engine's good. The interior looks like it was well kept, well taken care of. So you know what that means is, after this episode, expect to see the RDX episode soon. I'm going home with this motor. This is also another common issue, is wheel lock keys. All right, so I have, I bring, and I bring several different styles. This right here is the common size that you'll see from a discount tire lug nut, but I also have a bunch of others because there's so many different wheel lock keys out there. You don't want to not be able to get something off because you don't have one of these. I did that backwards. <laughs> Normally what I would do is I would loosen up the front mount and then the one in the back first, then take off the four 17s around there. Now we're gonna move towards the transmission. Look at this, it's barely hanging in there, right? Tweaked out, all kinds of weird. And I end up having to take this off before I can get the AC compressor because of the accident. It pushed the subframe into where I need to get to the AC compressor. Look at that, now the AC compressor is up against the uh, 
up the frame rail. So when I loosen these, it's gonna do something weird and it might cock the engine back in a weird way. <clears throat> also, you wanna have, you wanna keep caution on this kind of engine. These motor mounts, you see it's got a, a pillow mount. And sometimes when I, when I get to these, when I pull the transmission out on this side, the only thing that's left holding the engine in is this side. And a lot of times the pillow mounts are broken, which means once you drop the transmission, the only thing that's holding it on is that. And if it's broken, that means the whole engine would fall. I still have to get underneath the car to loosen everything up. So what I'm gonna do now is do that first while both motor mounts are holding the engine in. I'm gonna go under there, take off the inspection plates, and, and then I'll work myself around to the top then I think the transmission will be ready to go. Well, I guess it wasn't as bad as I thought. That was it, just the four bolts. Oh, there we go. Wow, that looks good. So with the intake manifold off, I'm looking inside these, man. Man, that looks really nice in there. You know, it's too bad that this is a K20A3. Nobody wants these motors. Oh, man, but look how nice that is. Man, it did, like it's like brand new in there. You know, normally there would be a lot of stuff gunked up in there, but this looks super clean. You know, another good thing to grab is these knock sensors. All right, since it's right here and exposed, I'll grab them. On other engines like uh, the early model K20A2s, they're a different style knock sensor and the, the end, this plug right here always breaks off. I'm gonna grab this and uh, you'll have to grab the plug the associated plug that goes with that too because it is different than the one that uh, normally goes on like an RSX style. All right, the starter's off, all the bolts from underneath are off. And I just want to talk about this front motor mount right here. Okay, in a previous video, I had a commenter say that they're able to get to this really easy from inside the car without removing the cross member. And well, I'm not too sure about that, guys. I've done that before, and when you go to twist the engine, this gets all bound up in there. I was just thinking about this and maybe we want a full write up on how to remove one of these engines from an EP3 or at least the transmission. Uh, I think we'll go over all this stuff uh, kind of again because boom, we have another SI that's complete that we're gonna be pulling stuff from too. Now this is exactly what we wanna look for. One that's been crashed, you can see this is, this has seen much better days, right? It's crashed up front so you know that means it was running. This side's been hammered. Uh, look over here on the side, man. Hopefully everybody was okay in this, but also it's got all the goodies that we want. I've already looked this car over. These seats are in pretty good shape here. I'm gonna take these seats with us today because I know one of my buddies are gonna want them. EP3 shift cables aren't very desirable, so we're not gonna take them, but we are gonna take them off of the transmission. To do that, you'll see that there's two cotter pins here and here, and then we got these clips over here. And you wanna take a pair of channel locks. I have this set from Nipix. I'm gonna grab the lip of it, and I'm gonna roll the backside of the tool on the cable, and it's gonna lift it up pretty easily. There we go, as long as we have a good grip of it it will pull out pretty quick. There we go, that was a good grip. That was the one that we wanted right there. Usually, if you're keeping the cables like off an RSX transmission, you're gonna keep these and those cables. We did run into another snag. There is a bolt right here, the 17 mil. That's the last remaining bolt before we get this transmission out. Here's something else to criticize me, another tool that I bring with me that I'll get made fun of for having. All right, here we go. But this right here is our extractors. Uh, again, I wanna go home with what I came out here for. So I'm gonna make sure that I have the tools that I need to do that. Well, that's what this is right here. It's cut counter to the direction that we need to turn the bolt to get it out. So it will chew itself onto the end of the head here as it gets tighter. I have to hammer this thing on there. It's not getting a good enough grip. I went ahead and put on a little short extension so there's some surface area for me to be able to get the hammer on. They're hammered on pretty good. Let's just pull that extension out. And 
It's getting a ratchet on here. Okay, here goes nothing. Oh, there it is, right there. Boom, guys. That's how you win, right there, every time. Just bring the tools, all the tools. If you're doing this professionally, this is the stuff that you're gonna want. The last remaining things is gonna be this mount right here. I'll take the nuts off of the studs first. There's one here and then one in the back. And then there's a bolt right here. What's gonna happen there is I'm gonna take these two nuts out and then I'm gonna pull this bolt out, which is gonna drop the, in, the transmission out from the bay. Ah, oh, look at that. Okay, so now look at this. All right, we got this strut bar here. Um, it's not something that I would normally grab, but I'm going to because I do have a friend with an EP3 and he might like this piece. It's gonna interfere with me getting my, my thing in here. Now. This is nice. This thing is pretty rad. I've never picked one of these up before. I am familiar with titanium. It's just every time I pick one of these up, ugh, they're just so light. You know, I'm just not used to it. He's gonna really like that part. I've never picked one of these up before. I am familiar with titanium. It's just every time I pick one of these up, ugh, they're just so light. All right, the transmission's down. You can see that I put a wheel and tire. That's pretty standard stuff that I do. I do that because you see how much the engine drops and that that could help absorb some of the shock if the transmission were to come off the block at the same time and then fall on the ground. Pretty much all we have left to do is grab it. I'll go ahead and look it over to see if there's anything that we need to know extra. Uh, we already tried shifting gears and it seemed to go well. We'll go ahead and turn it since it's right here. It seems to be turning okay, but that doesn't mean anything. Upon inspection, the transmission looks like it's in one piece. I don't see any big major holes anywhere. It doesn't look like it's been taken apart before. There's no LSD, so, and I think that's going to, going to be it for today. You know, it's too bad I didn't get the wiring harness out of this one or the ECU, but there's always that one over there that we have a chance at. And I All right, since we're not taking the engine, I'm just unplug I just finished unplugging everything from the block, uh, the wiring harness that is, and then now we're going to pull it off of the ECU. This particular wiring harness, just like the RSX, gets attached to the engine, and then the harness comes completely inside of the firewall right to the ECU. On the EP3, the ECU sits right behind the uh, glove box. This kick panel right here underneath kind of comes off and it exposes the rest of the ECU. Oh, there it is. All right, so we're gonna lower the cross, we're gonna lower the subframe like I should have, and that's uh, gonna unbolt the back, and I'm gonna unbolt the front and then the back first before we drop the subframe. Underneath we have the T-bracket and the rear motor mount, but we can remove it by just taking these three bolts back here off. All right, and then undo the exhaust because it's attached to the subframe also. Then you're gonna hit up these 17s that are back here. I already worked out one over here, and then there's four more. Always work on the back of the subframe first. It, this could fall on us if we we're if we undid the, fir the front first. All right, we're pretty much finishing up. So you got to see how the subframe comes off on the EP3. Pretty similar to the RSX. Our transmission's out and uh, ready to go. We got two transmissions, two intermediate shafts, two intake manifolds off the EP3. To thank you for watching the channel. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to check out our sister channel at VTech Academy. Like always, happy tuning.